In previous videos, we uh, talked about the shamanic journey, and we also visited the idea of the three worlds, the lower world, the upper world, and the middle world. In this particular video, I'd like to um, propose a practical example of how some of these can be used, particularly the middle world journey. Now, the middle world, as you may remember, is this world. It is this reality system, and it incorporates everything that you know. Uh, it, is the, it is the present, it's the now, and sometimes we think about that as being a slightly shifted energetic version of the physical reality that we experience every day. So that if I, for example, go to visit a friend and have a conversation, I'm not really having a conversation with him in a physical sense, but energetically or perhaps from soul to soul or spirit to spirit. So we're having a different kind of connection there. What's fascinating to me, though, is that the concept of time is also a part of the middle world. It is part of what we interact with every day as we move through our physical existence, after all. So time is a, is a middle world concept, and you can journey into time as well as you can journey to the next town or to your home. So uh, let's think about that a little bit and see if we can't find a very practical way to use that concept. Now, clearly you can journey into your past, and there are practices for journeying into the past where you can heal old wounds that happened in the past. Uh, that's certainly doable, and um, maybe something we'll cover at a different time or a different video. What I want to do now is look at the, the concept of journeying into your future. Now, journeying into the future is a little bit tricky because we're all aware that because we have um, free will, that every moment in our lives, we make a choice as to whether we're going to take an action or not take an action, which means that time and the future are not fixed. It's not, it's not certain. It's very malleable. However, it is possible, as we all know, to put out into the future something that we want to experience. Uh, and there's some specific practices for that, and this is one of them. So um, there's two ways that we can go about looking at that. And I want to talk about both of them briefly. Let's say that you're looking at the idea of um, two possible jobs, two possible uh, changes of your employment or different directions for your career, perhaps, however, however that might show up for you. Now, you can do a journey if you want to, to track how your life might be if you make choice A. Uh, and the intention might be, show me what, I will, what things will be like for me if I go uh, down track A in five years. What will that look like? What will that feel like? And you do the journey. Um, and when you come back, then you get an opportunity to uh, consider what you have learned about how you would feel. Uh, who you might be with, and those sorts of things. But you see, you're not actually laying out the track. You're just going down that road to see energetically how that decision might affect you in the future. So you can do the same with track, number, with track B. Uh, do a journey with the same intention. Show me how things will be uh, for me energetically or in a feeling state in five years if I go take this direction. So you go on the journey and experience what that is like. Uh, and then you come back and you have an opportunity to consider that too. So then you have two pieces of information that you brought in from someplace beside your head. If you try to figure out which direction to take on a choice like that, it becomes very difficult to do because every choice that you make is based on all the decisions that you've made in your past. That's the only way that your brain, your biocomputer, can actually help you to sort things out. It computes based on data, and the data always comes from the past. So doesn't it make sense to bring in some other information from a different source altogether, from spirit, from your own future, perhaps? Um, that I would not suggest making your full choice based on those journeys, but it is a good way to expand your, your knowledge base so that you can make a, a different kind of choice than you ordinarily would. The other thing that we can do with a future journey is to um, 
help along the manifestation process. Uh, we all know what manifestation is. It is the idea of deciding something you want to bring into your life or to experience in the future. And there are a number of different techniques in which you um, make that happen. And on a shamanic journey, what you can do is you can journey into your future. I envision this often as uh, following along the course of a river, as the river is flowing down uh, um, downhill or uh, into our future, in a sense. Uh, I think of it for myself as, as taking a walk. It may be along a path or maybe through a meadow or certainly along the riverbank. But I have uh, with me a pouch, and in this pouch I have some seeds. These seeds are what I want. These seeds are the experiences that I want to bring into my life. And as I journey, I, I move into time, into my future, and I find a place that feels comfortable, get a reference point. Maybe it's three years, maybe it's one year, maybe it's five years. Don't know what that would be, and it's based on a lot of different things. But you'll get a feeling or a sense as you go on this journey about a time frame. Whenever you reach the place where it feels like the right time frame for you, you might find some, uh, some land or some ground that appears uh, fertile and plant your seeds. Plant your seeds. Take them out of your pouch, put them in the dirt, cover them over, plant them. Maybe go over to the river and to this future water, water your plant, and uh, let it be. Then you can return on your own. You can also do a ceremony of some kind if you want to, a ritual of planting that might be helpful to connect you energetically and spiritually to that place. Um, now, in subsequent journeys, you can do the same thing. Only this time you journey to the same place and you check on your plant. You check on your seeds. Where are they in their development? Uh, do they need more water? Do they need more fertilizer? What do they need in order to help them in their growth? They may have sprouted already or they may be fully grown. Not sure. But you can go back again and again and again and you can tend the seeds of what you want, which you have planted in your future. It's a very shamanic thing to do, a very shamanic approach to manifestation. So, um, I offer these two very practical ways to work with the idea of journeying through time, uh, to check out alternatives, not to make them happen, but to allow them to happen or allow them to show you what it would be like. Um, and in, in regard to that, there's another concept that I want to, uh, to mention to you. Um, in a shamanic sense, everything is alive. Uh, animals are alive and rocks are alive and people are alive and that sort of thing. But in a very real sense, your thoughts are alive. In a very real sense, what you want, what you put out there that you want, you can think of that as a living thing. You can think of it as a plant, or you can think of it as a being of some kind. Now, our ordinary way of trying to bring things into our reality, particularly in our Euro-American culture, is to like try to drag it in. It's like we grab it, and we hold on to it, and we try to pull it into our experience. Uh, now, the reality is if that were a living being that you were holding on to and trying to drag towards you, it makes a lot of sense that what it would want to do is to get away. And so that may be part of what you, why you can't bring in what you want quite as easily as you uh, might could otherwise because it's fighting you. In that sense, manifestation is not about pulling and it's not about control. It's really about um, something more like seduction. It's more like making your life such that what you want is enticed to join you. You want it to come to you rather than to drag it to you. And you can also think of it as once you have planted these seeds out into your future, when you have done that, your future begins to pull you in that direction so that when you have choices, you will have a sense or a feeling or a draw toward that seed toward that what you want in the future. So your future literally pulls you toward it and helps you in the manifestation process. Very shamanic. It's a very uh, spiritual way of looking at how we create 
our lives with integrity and with strength and power.